diving I'll never meet the ground Hey, it's Nate with another piano tutorial. Today I'm doing Shallow from A Star Is Born by Lady Gaga and features Bradley Cooper. This one has been requested a bunch of times and I'm gonna teach you an easy piano accompaniment that sounds great if you wanna play and sing it. It's one of those songs where the chords, the melody, the lyrics, they all come together to create such an emotional feeling. I personally get the chills at the chorus and so I've really been enjoying playing it and I think you will too. Let's jump in. <laughs> All right, so first things first, I recommend you get the chords and lyrics chart. I put a link down in the description. You can download that, see how all the chords fit with the lyrics. I'm actually gonna start with the verse and then we'll circle back to the intro because the intro is just like the verse but with a few extra details. Here's the underlying chords for the verse. I'm gonna show you those chords and then we can develop it into the picking guitar part that you hear on the recording. So for this E minor seven chord, in the right hand, we're just gonna play a G and a D. And just for reference, this is middle C here. And then we're gonna play a E bass note in the left hand with our pinky, kinda like two octaves lower there. Next up, we've got this D over F sharp. Now I'm gonna keep my right hand in the exact same place. I'm still gonna do that D with the pinky, but instead of the G, I'm gonna play the second finger on A, and the left hand is gonna step up to that F sharp. So the Letter after the slash in these slash chords is the note that the left hand, the bass, the bass note plays. Next for this G chord, we're gonna go right back to what we did at first, just G and D, and the left hand is gonna step up to a G. You can use your third finger on that. Before we go too much further, I wanna mention we are in 4-4 four, four time, so that means that each of these measures gets four counts. We're kind of counting the song like one, two, three, Four, feeling it like that. And so in that first measure where there's two chords in the one measure, it means that each of them get half the measure or two counts each. So the counting that we've got so far would be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's finish up this line here. We've got this C chord. Now I'm gonna stretch my left hand thumb up a little bit out of the where it was resting to hit that bass C there. Um, we can keep our right hand thumb on the G and just stretch our hand up a little bit to play a C and an E. So that's going to be our C chord there. Then uh, to finish up this line, um, we're going to go right back to that G and then finally land on a D. And we can do that just like we did the D over F sharp before where we've got an A and a D in the right hand, but instead of that F sharp bass note, we're gonna put our thumb up here on this D. So counting the whole line, it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? I'm now gonna expand this into what you hear the guitar do on the recording, but if you wanna keep it just simple, exactly like I just did it, um, that would totally work for the cover. Now to do this guitar part, we're gonna need to be thinking in eighth notes. So we're taking the four counts in a measure and dividing those beats in half. So thinking one and two and three and four and. It's gonna start out by taking those three notes that we did for the E minor seven chord and playing them one at a time. We can call it bottom, middle, top. And we're gonna do bottom, middle, top, middle. And you can just hold down the bass note as you rock back and forth in the right hand. Bottom, middle, top, middle. And the timing on that is gonna be one and two and. For the D over F sharp chord, we're gonna break it into left and right hand, do bottom and then top, and that's gonna be on three and. So all together so far, one and two and three and. One more time, one and two and three and. Now, we're actually gonna hit this G an eighth note earlier. So sneaking it in at the end of that measure on the and after four. So I'm gonna feel beat four, four, and, and on that upbeat when I'm 
my foot comes up if I'm tapping my foot or if I'm nodding my head, it's when my head comes up. And I'm gonna hit that G and then I'm just gonna hold it through that whole next measure. So everything so far, one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and. If you can get the hang of that, the second half of this is gonna come a little bit easier because it's a lot of the same rhythms. So next up we've got the C. I'm gonna play it like this. One and two and three, four. So on beat one, I'm hitting that bass note and then I am just stepping up through the three notes of the C chord. One and two and, I'm probably just gonna kind of hold them as I go. One and two and three. And then on beat four, I'm just gonna play the whole chord. One and two and three. Four. Now, I just want to say there is a lot of variation to what the guitar does on that C chord. On the recording, sometimes it goes. I found that this exact pattern that I'm doing to be pretty easy and it sounds great always to just get in a groove and do it the same way every time makes it a little simpler. And finally, we've got the G to D and we're gonna do that for the G bass note first, then right hand together one and two and then we're finally going to land on that d chord on the and after two one and two and three four so all of that together is going to be one and two and three and four and one two three four one and two and three four one and two and three four I recommend just mathematically counting it out, repeating it a bunch until you start to get that muscle memory. Over a couple of days, if it's tricky for you, I think you will be able to get the hang of it and then, and only then you'll be able to sing over the top of it without too much trouble. By the way, you're probably hearing that little thing that the guitar does. So it's got this cool sound where it's the hammer on and the pull off. Now, I don't think it sounds very good on piano because it doesn't get that subtleties of the different sounds with a hammer on the pull-offs. Sounds a little heavy-handed to me, but if you hear it and you really want to add it, after you hit the D here, you can just move your hand up and go E, F sharp, E, D. And just do it really fast. Um, you can use your ear for the rhythm, but I'm not going to do it in my version. Just thought I would mention that. Now that you know that, I just want to circle back on the intro. So the song starts out with basically that line straight through without singing. The only difference is that when you go to the C, there's this little. So when you get to the C, you start the arpeggio like we were doing it. And then instead of going up to the E, you're gonna hit the D first, and you can let go of that C because it gets a little bit muddy sounding. Um, then you hit E and then you step back down to the D. So it's like this little melody here. And timing on that is one and two and three and four and again, one and two and three and four and, and then the rest of the line can be just like you were doing it before. And then before the verse starts, there's just kind of on its own, one more pass through the first half of the line. All right, cool, let's keep moving. So after that first verse with Bradley Cooper singing, that's just four times through what we learned, we have um, a little instrumental moment before we go to the second verse where Lady Gaga sings. And that's just gonna be kind of like the end of the intro where it just does the first half of that pattern we've been working on. So it just is gonna go like this. And then again. And then we start that next verse. Tell me something, boy. Um, so this verse is gonna be pretty much just like the first verse. The one thing I'm going to start adding though is for the last part of it where it's the I'm falling. So that's where on the recording the bass and actually the piano on top of the acoustic guitar that we've been mimicking so far, it comes in, uh, it starts to fill out a little bit. And so for those G chords that happen um, in the middle of the line and at the end of the line, I'm gonna start doing the middle note, the B, just so that it feels a little bit more full than just the fifths did. I'm falling 
In all the good times I find myself. And also for that D, instead of just doing it sort of thinned out like that, I'm gonna put my thumb on this F sharp here. And if you think that that sounds better all along, you can totally do that from the beginning. It sounds just a little more full. So that verse is gonna end on, and in the bad times I fear myself. I'm off the deep end, watch as I dive in. So there's the chorus. This is the my favorite moment of the song. Now, I am not going to jump up an octave like Lady Gaga does because my voice doesn't do that. But that's part of what makes it so cool. So if your voice can do it, I hope I hope that you do that. But here's the chord progression for this section. We've got an A minor chord, and I'm doing this with my second finger, and that is where your hand should kind of have left off at the end of the last verse. Anyway, A for the left hand, second finger, and then A, C, E in the right hand, just all white keys, and that's for a measure D bend. Now we've got a D over F sharp. So just like we were doing it in the verse, um, at the end of the last verse when I added the F sharp with the thumb, so F sharp, A, D. Now we've got a G, just like we were doing it, the full thing at the end of the last verse. And then this D, we're gonna do it just like we just did the other D, except for I'm gonna come up here with my thumb to do this D bass note up here. Um, so that's just stretching out of the position a little bit to reach your thumb up there. And then finally landing on an E minor like this. So the left hand pinky on that low E, and then right hand, G, B, E. And so all those chords lasted a full measure except for the G and the D, which each got two counts. And I'm gonna start doing quarter note chords in my right hand. So just playing on every count. Now careful not to hit them too hard. I think just the change here and the vocals is enough to get that emotional impact. You can oversell it if you're really banging with your right hand, but it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's, I'm off the deep end, watch as I dive in, I'll never meet the ground. Cries through the surface, so it goes around another time can hurt us we're far from the shallow now then we go to what i called the post chorus on the chord chart that's the in the shallow and it looks a lot like the chorus did the only difference is in that first measure of a minor we're going to split it between regular old a minor and then a minor over g so that's just stepping down the left hand bass note to a g there in the shallow, in the shallow, in the shallow, we're far from the shallow now. That's all there is to the post chorus until you hit that E minor. Um, because before we jump into the bridge, there's an extra measure of E minor. So it's gonna stay on E minor for a full eight counts here at the end of the post chorus. And I put a little asterisk on this E minor in the chord chart because um, if you wanna just kind of play around a little bit on these three notes, E, D with your fourth finger and G, the guitar does a little bit of picking on those notes to kind of keep the interest going through that waiting period before the bridge. So from the end of the post chorus, we're far from the shallow now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think I probably do that rhythm different every time. You can just kind of play around with it, but just adding a little bit of sparkle to that section before we get to the bridge. Oh. Ah, 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 ah. 
So this is the big build up before the really climactic final chorus. Here's the chords we need, including a couple that we haven't done yet. So this is a B minor here. I'm gonna move my left hand up just a hair and put my second finger on the B. Um, so that's gonna be B here, and then in the middle with the right hand, B, D, and F sharp. Um, I moved my second finger here just so I could reach this D here. So now we've got a D, and now this is a different inversion of the D than we were doing before. We're moving that F sharp up top, and that's just because it transitions so much nicer from that B minor chord. All you gotta do is drop the thumb down to an A. And speaking of smooth transitions, the next chord is the A major chord. So we can keep our right hand thumb here, and we're just gonna collapse the hand down into this A major chord, which is just like the A minor chord, except for the third, the middle note is sharped. That's how you make a minor chord major. So we've got an A, a C sharp, and an E. And then I'm going to hit um, the A bass note here, can help if you use your second finger on that. So you had your second finger on B, you went up to the D, and then you stretched down to the A like that. Um, and then finally, we've got this E minor chord, just like we were doing it before. So you can use your pinky on that low um, E there. And then we loop back around to B minor again, D, and then A. Now, when we enter the section, I'm gonna resume doing quarter notes like I was doing in the chorus. But as it goes, the drums are building, maybe around the E minor time. I'm gonna start doing eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and I'm off the D. Ben. So we're really just building up the anticipation and energy there. Um, you can feel it out however you like. And that means we're landing in that final chorus and you already know the chords for that. Um, gonna do things a little bit different. First off, I'm gonna add octaves in the left hand. Um, so I was doing it like that before with the A. This time I'm also doing a lower A. If you can't stretch the octaves, that's okay. You could go down to do the lower notes if you want or just keep it as is. Just make sure to, this is the part where you wanna play loud. Um, also, in the first half of this chorus, we're not gonna do the quarter notes. We're just gonna hold it. Just really dramatic. I'm off the deep end, watch as I dive in. So moving those octaves down to the F sharp. Dive in, I'll never meet the ground. So just notice for the G octaves to the D octaves, I went up to the D and then back down for the E. That's following the bass on the recording, what happens there. Then for the next time around, for crash through the surface where, that's where the drums really kick on in on the recording. It's funny that they, they held out for so long for the full drum beat to kick in. But so I'm really gonna play into that. I'm going back to the quarter notes and if it's not too tricky for you, you can also start doing just a little bit of like eighth notes between the counts, like one, two, and three, four, and one, two. Totally optional, but I'm gonna be throwing that in. Um, and then we just keep it going like that. The post-chorus is gonna be just like it was before, but with this new energy, with the octaves. In the shallow, shallow, in the shallow, And when you finish up that post-chorus, we're far from the shallow now. You can still play with those notes a little bit. You can hear that on the recording. And then for the very final chord, we're gonna do an E minor seven. So basically what you've been doing with the E minor, but just taking the top note and having it be a D instead. And then you can let that ring out and the song is over. All right, thank you for sticking with it. I'm gonna now play the full cover so you can see how all these parts we've talked about fit together in the complete thing. And if any of it is going too fast and you need to see something better, you can click the little wheel, um, the settings wheel on YouTube, and then you can set the playback speed to like 75% or 50%. That is a really good trick. If this was helpful, please do subscribe. Click the bell so you know whenever I come out with new videos like this and leave a request in the comments. Like I said, this one was a request uh, a couple people commented and I listened to the song and was like, yeah, let's do it. So here's my version of Shallow.
Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world, or do you need more? Is there something else you're searching for? I'm falling in all the good times. I find myself longing for change, and in the bad times I fear myself. Tell me something, boy. Aren't you tired trying to fill that void, or do you need more? Ain't it hard keeping it so hardcore? I'm falling. In all the good times, I find myself longing for. Times I fear myself. I'm off the deep end. Watches I dive in. I'll never meet the ground. Crash through the surface where they can't hurt us. We're far from the shallow now. In the shallow, in the shallow, in the shallow, we're far from the shallow now. Oh, ha. Crash through the surface where they can't hurt us. We're far from.